We do have some breaking news tonight. Firefighters responding to a brush fire that burned down two trailer units on South Inland Empire Way in Spokane. Now officials say the fire started at one unit and spread to another unit. Spokane Fire Department tell us the fire is completely out, but the cause of the fire is still unknown at this time. Officials also say no one was hurt and we will be tracking more fires. For more information on the latest fires in Washington, just text the word wildfire at 509-448. 2000 and good evening everyone. Thanks for joining us here tonight at 11. I'm Regina on. We want to begin tonight by talking about those dangerously hot temps we've been talking about over the past couple of days. So let's head over right to meteorologist Thomas Patrick, who is out on the outdoor weather center for us tonight. So Thomas, did we actually hit that 100 degree temperatures today? Yeah, Regina. Well, here's the thing. We've been getting a little bit warmer each day and today in Spokane. We fell just one degree shy of the triple digit mark, but that was the official observation out at the airport. Spokane Valley did get up to 100 degrees. Lewiston was 105. Moses Lake leading the way at 109 degrees in the inland northwest today. So plenty hot across the region and whether it was 99 or 100, it was still very, very hot outside. Still have those heat alerts, the heat advisories and the excessive heat warnings in effect for one more afternoon that for tomorrow because I think tomorrow is going to be just like it was today. Just as hot, if not maybe another degree or two warmer than it was overall. Now here Here's the thing. I've been watching the skies in case there was any thunderstorm or dry lightning activity. I'm happy to report that there hasn't been anything so far so good this evening. Now a little bit earlier uh, on some of our uh, weather satellites, they were picking up on that cloud cover over Oregon. Looked like it was primed and ready to go this weather system, but it didn't materialize, which is very good because the last thing we need is more wildfires across the region, especially with how dry it has been recently. So let's take it hour by hour tomorrow. Best time to get outside of of course, is the morning hours when it's still in those 70s. But look at how quickly it heats up. Even by noon, we're looking at 95 degrees by noon with triple digit heat likely in Spokane and all of Washington tomorrow afternoon. So try to limit your time outdoors tomorrow and drink more water and take breaks in that air conditioning as you can, as this will should be the last extreme heat day. So I'll just show you how much, if any, cooler it gets for this upcoming weekend. Those details are all in just a few minutes. With each passing day, I am less and less optimistic that the guidance we receive uh, will enable us to open our buildings. That's a new message tonight from the Spokane Public School Superintendent and the school board giving parents some insight on what schools could potentially look like this fall. And here at CREM, we are committed to bringing you the facts as we try to navigate all of these changes happening in school. So we want to start with some key points that you should know from tonight's meeting, starting with the two models they mentioned. SPS leaders still don't know whether they're going to reopen buildings or if they're going to go fully online. They said they're still waiting to get more guidance from state and local health leaders. So if buildings do open, students in K through four will attend class every day and those class sizes will be about 20 students per class. For grades five through six, they'll be on an alternating schedule of in person and virtual classes. All students will have to sit six feet apart in those classrooms and breakfast and lunch will also be provided in those classrooms. Then for grades seven through 12, they will have alternating schedules as well. Students will receive activities and assignments on days they are not having classes in person after school activities will also be provided whenever possible. SPS also reiterated the fact that students will have more structure and routine this fall compared to how classes were in the spring. And Superintendent Adam Swinward said routines and habits are important for all students regardless of what grade they are in. So that was a plan for if buildings would reopen. But Spokane Public School leaders are also preparing for the possibility of fully online classes. So if that happens, classes will be taught by in real time teachers. Is that the teacher is present in real time. School's in session, it's started. This is the time that we're gonna do math. And that real time experience will be a blend of live instruction, group work, and independent activities. 
Other key factors of full virtual learning include SPS providing laptops for all students. They say this is to bridge that gap in the digital divide. It's also to help families juggling different grade levels so siblings won't have to share a laptop. SPS also mentioning that there, there could be limited in-person instruction for small groups of five or less. Following the state guidelines and tonight's meeting was a parent Q&A meeting as well. So one person asked if schools were moving to fully online teaching and what's the best way to approach their students. Here's what the superintendent had to say. And we have to recognize that we have the responsibilities as the adults in our community to do everything that we can to come together um, and to not look for ways to uh, separate and look for ways to come together so that we can support our kids and give them the best experience possible. And and SPS still working on their fall reopening plan, so they are waiting on more instruction from health leaders. The district saying it has to have its plan submitted, though, by August 12th. And we know everything changing. It can feel a little scary or even frustrating, so that's why we are here to help you navigate through it all. For more information on what was discussed in tonight's meetings, you can text the word schools to 509-448-2000, and we'll send you our article right to your phone. All right, now let's get to our other top headlines. If you live in Kellogg, you're going to have to start wearing a face covering. That's for when you can't social distance and not wearing a face mask could get you a $100 fine. One business owner says he understands that some feel like their freedom is being taken away with the new rules, but he argues that wearing a mask is a small price to pay to protect the city. This community in particular has so many elderly and, and people that are susceptible to, to this disease that I do feel it's important for, for business owners and the people coming to this valley to, to mask up. Now, there are some exceptions to the mandate, including kids under five and those with certain medical conditions. Kellogg's mask mandate runs through August. And new changes to bars and restaurants, as well as some gyms starting today. Counties in phase three like Whitman, Stevens and Lincoln cannot seat more than five people per table, and they'll all have to be from that same household. Restaurant capacity in phase three will also be reduced to 50% and bar seating is banned. Bars, breweries and wineries cannot have any indoor service. Last call for alcohol will be at 10 o'clock p.m. And these changes will also impact gyms. So in counties like phase two, in phase two, like Spokane, only can seat five people inside a gym at one time. In North Idaho, we've seen many people upset over wearing a mask or not following those protocols during this pandemic. I spoke with two restaurant owners tonight, one from Penny's Pit who didn't want to speak on camera and another at Messy's Burgers. Both say they are done with rude and or disgruntled customers over in North Idaho, especially during this time where we all need just a little bit of kindness. Owner of Messy's Burgers in Spirit Lake, Idaho, Jesse Keller says he is over rude customers, putting this sign up for people to get the message. We've just been getting a lot of customers in here just demanding everything they possibly could get, uh, not respecting my staff, not actually even being kind, just demanding. He says during this pandemic, he has seen an increase in what he calls rude customers, even recalling one moment in particular where a customer pushed one of his employees to tears. It was just horrible. And so she came out and she was upset, uh, not crying because she was sad. She was just, it just caught her off guard. Jesse says this is a rare occurrence. He tells me he hardly ever gets rude customers, but during this time, it happens much more frequently. He says his team loves their jobs and they hope to bring a smile to your face. All they ask is to get that same respect back. And if we just spread a little bit of kindness to each other, you know, wave, smile, just help someone out. Pay for someone's coffee in front of you. You know, they, you don't know what people are going through. And kindness definitely does spread. And Jesse also tells me he has partnered with Penny's Pit. If you post something positive about either restaurant on Facebook, you could win a $50 gift certificate to either restaurant there.